Hello and welcome to another edition of ARC Media. I'm Doug Whitelaw coming to you from the Arc Age Street Mission in the beautiful Old East Village in London, Ontario. We're glad you joined us and we trust you'll enjoy what we've prepared for you today. We're still in the uh, lockdown as we're uh, filming this. So uh, at the ARC we are continuing to provide food seven days a week at 5 p.m. on a takeout basis. We've had some good help and we do appreciate that. Uh, people bringing us food and other supplies and other groups even coming in and providing meals for us on the weekend. So we do appreciate that as do the folks. We're beginning to think through the plans to how to reopen as, uh, as our businesses, but uh, it does appear we'll still be uh, largely shut down for a little bit while to come yet. So keep praying for us and uh, we'll keep serving as long as we've got uh, food and supplies. series of interviews of folks that are part of the ARC family and uh, uh, we sort of started with uh, people who are uh, either key volunteers or staff and today I have with me uh, Dave Hancock. Dave's been a volunteer for a, a while and then he kind of joined the part-time staff. He's been our one of our evening uh, supervisors looking after the meals. He looks after our Sunday Connection meeting which is kind of like our church service thing on Sunday afternoon. And uh, he's also now our newest board member. So uh, welcome, Dave. Now, Dave, um, how long has you been part of uh, the ARC activities? Uh, do you remember? Well, yeah, I mean, I lose track of time pretty easily, but I've been uh, sort of, as you say, the evening meal supervisor for almost two years now. And then prior to that, as you say, I was volunteering with uh, with the local church a couple times a month for probably about six or seven years. Yeah. So um, you were one of those fortunate guys, I guess you'd say fortunate, took an early retirement and uh, that creates space to do something different. And this is quite different. Tell us a little bit about what you were doing and, and life before you came to the ARC. Well, I was, uh, I was an accountant at, uh, at London Life, or Canada Life now, I guess, is, as, as they call it. I've been there for uh, a little over 35 years. Mm. And, and as you say, with the way things were evolving there and some of the um, changes they were making, they offered uh, retirement pr packages to people like me, and uh, uh, it didn't take me too long to, uh, to decide to accept it. So, uh, but you didn't come right away. Uh, there was a little bit of time in between. Uh, yeah, a, li a little bit of time, and and but it was kind of neat the way the way things worked out. I was, uh, um, you know, knew that I was going to retire for a number of months in advance of the actual date, and uh, had been praying and, and saying, okay, God, where where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? What door is going to open for me? And and nothing was happening. And uh, and then uh, one night when I was serving and I was talking to Paul. Um, who was an uh, evening meal supervisor at the time, saying, nothing's happening, I'm praying and not getting any message. And he said, oh, well, we just had two evening meal supervisors retire. Well, one had, a, uh, had to go for heart surgery and then another person went to set up Teen Challenge out, out in Colorado. So I thought, okay, that's uh, obviously God at work. Mm. And, uh, and then sort of just jumped at that opportunity. Yeah, sometimes people uh, miss the thing that's standing right in front of them. They want a lightning bolt or something when actually the very circumstances you were praying for were right, right there. So it seemed natural to, yeah. to take. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> uh, is this something you always thought you might like to do, work with street folks or? 
Well, you know what, I, I mean, probably if I look back, I probably you would say I had a soft spot in my heart for, for, the, for the disadvantaged and, and stuff, but it really, um, I don't think it really kind of coalesced until, um, as I say, it was, was serving uh, with, with a church uh, well, you know, six, seven years ago. And the first night I served, you know, it was, it was just probably a typical evening, had an opportunity to interact with some of the guests and, and, and talk with them. And, um, uh, you know, when, when I left, I'm usually one of those guys that just has the music blaring in the car r really loud. And, and as soon as I got in the car, I, I turned it off. And, and it wasn't like I prayed all the way home, but I was just in silence, just kind of trying to internalize um, you know, what I'd experienced uh, that, that, that evening. And I was just kind of overwhelmed and, and with, with it all. And I think the thing that really struck me was that, you know, you hear all the statistics and you know, homelessness and people needing food and food insecurity and stuff. But when you spend an evening, like, like we did it, like I did at the Ark that night, it's people. Like it really just made it really hit home and personalize it. Like these are people that are going through really, really tough times. And, and it, just, it just really hit me. And the next day at church, um, I can't remember the scripture. I, I want to think it's the one, you know, where Jesus was saying, you know, if, if you've helped the least of these, you've helped me. And, and, but I don't know if it was that one or not. But anyway, whatever the scripture was, um, certainly related to helping you know, the, the marginalized and the disadvantaged, um, I just felt like a wave of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. like filling my heart mm -hmm. as, as if to say, that's what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it took me a little while after that to kind of get fully engaged with this other church team. Um, to serve here, but yeah, I, th I, so I think, yeah, there might have been something beforehand, but I think God just touched my heart and said, this, this is for you. Actually a very specific, uh, uh, almost a counter right there. I think so, yeah. yeah. So one thing I've learned is that uh, people come to the ark, uh, and even including me, uh, for what God is doing in their life, and I think that's, you've already begun to allude to, you know, God moving and, and moving you. Um, so tell us, if you don't mind, a little bit about your own spiritual journey, even up to that point, if you, if you would. Yeah, well, I'm, I, you know, I've said to the folks downstairs during e uh, evening meal devotionals, you know, I'm 60 years old, but I've only been a Christian for 15 years or so. And, and uh, you know, maybe dabbled a little bit, but, but didn't really get into the uh, faith or investigating it very seriously. Um, my wife started going to uh, Forest City Church. And, and I can't remember how long she went in advance of, of finally, you know, getting me to go, but maybe six months, nine months or whatever. And it, Forest City Church is a great church. It's a fantastic secret church. Um, and, and, and really just talking about the good news and, and welcoming everybody. And, and the, this, they, they, they had a series called Losing Your Religion. And, and, and I thought, oh, it's going to be one of those things. Society's going down the drain because we lost our religion. We don't follow rules and all that kind of stuff. Well, I probably could have been more wrong, but I don't know how. Because <laughs> the whole series was lose your religion, right? It's got, you know, following Jesus is not following the rules. It's freedom. It's, the, it's, it's entering into a relationship with God through accepting Jesus as your Savior. And that whole concept of... God wanting to have a personal, intimate relationship with me. It's the first time I'd ever been, you know, aware of that. I always thought God was just up on his throne, kind of judging us type of thing. Mm -hmm. And again, totally wrong. And, and that was like a really big um, aha moment for me. It's like God wants to be in a relationship with me. And then it just sort of started, you know, my journey really started mm. at, at that point there. Mm. What's the difference before and after in life, would you say, once you, once you start to grasp that? Well, um, you, you know, I, I think in terms of like day to day to day, I would say that prior to that, um, and my wife would certainly agree, I was a workaholic. I spent, you know, work, work 60 hours a week type mm -hmm. of thing at times. Um, and, and so I think my priorities gradually started to change. Um, you know, so I was spending, you know, the work-life balance became a little more balanced, if you like. Um, also, I, I, you know, um, you know, less, less, um, less intense, more relaxed, more peace about me. Um, you know, I had, um, you know, a bit of a shorter fuse than I, you know, should have had. Um, I, I was, was a potty mouth. 
Mm. Um, I swore a lot, just, you know, not at people, but it was just part of the, that, that was an adjective I used. Mm. And, and all that stuff kind of just, you know, just disappeared. And it wasn't like I was praying, you know, God do this, God do that, you know. Mm. It was just, I think as I spent more time um, coming closer to Him, um, you know, the fruit of the Spirit just started to manifest itself in my life and, and, and I was experiencing more joy, experiencing more peace mm. um, over time, mm. over time. And then, you know, my desires changed. You know, like mm. I wouldn't be here, if you like, right. um, um, if it wasn't for what God had been doing in my life mm. and, and my priorities changed. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, I wouldn't say it's like a whole change, but it's just lots of different different little things. Yeah, so sort of progressive over those 15 years, uh, bit by bit, you look back and suddenly you realize, oh, that's, I, that's, I'm different in that, yeah. in that respect. Yeah, it's kind of like if, if, if you know, when you, if you have little kids and, and, and you don't notice how much they're growing until you kind of look at the lines on the wall mm. and go, holy cow, mm. he's grown six inches this last year, right? Mm. And so that's kind of, I think, day to day to day, I wouldn't have noticed it, but yeah. when you sort of take personal inventory and go, yeah. wow, yeah, like things have changed. Yeah. People around you probably notice it more. Yeah. At the time, right? That, like that, your family uh, and colleagues, I suppose, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's it was kind of, it's kind of funny at work where 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 people you know would know that I was a Christian and and uh, you know they would swear and they go oh Dave sorry yeah you know and, I mean, you didn't say anything to them no no because yeah. I mean I was there I'm not going to judge anybody for for saying a certain word you know yeah. or not but mm. but yeah and, and and so and and it's at work. You know, we tried to kind of, um, you know, because I ran clothing drives for the Ark and and mm. and and uh, you know, raise money for mission services and type of, type of things like that, which I would never have done in the past. But it just sort of, you know, so people can kind of, you know, look at, at at what the possibilities are, what the needs are, because mm. a lot of people just don't know what the needs mm. are, and then and then they see what how they can sort of help out and and, and fit into, into yeah. it. Yeah, is it hard to have a relationship with Jesus? Like, like it, like it seems so simple when you say it, and yet people struggle over it. We, why do we get caught up in the religion thing? Do you think instead of just that pure sense of grace and 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 relationship? Yeah, I I don't know. Trying I, to make it ourselves, I guess. Yeah, it's and like, I think part of it is is our culture. Like we're we're so trained, you know, to look out for ourselves, to be independent. You know, pick pick yourself up by your bootstraps. So anything we have to achieve in life, you know, it should be our works that achieve it. And so when you get into a situation with, with, as you say, accepting Jesus as your Savior, it's just pure grace. Mm. Jesus has done all the work for us on the cross. Yeah. All we have to do is believe. It's so culture, countercultural mm. that we have a hard time seeing how, and I hate to say this, how easy it is. Mm. You know, it's uh, mm. walking with Jesus after you become a believer isn't necessarily easy. Mm. But at the t accepting him as your savior yeah. is, is not up to yeah. us. It's just, it's just. Now, life isn't up. easy before it either, right? Like, no. it, uh, but you, he's there walking with you and, uh, and for a purpose. Yeah, Jesus said, uh, his yoke is easy. Yeah. Yeah, it's not hard to pull it, to walk with him. Uh, he's doing the pulling <laughs> a lot of it, right? Yeah, but, yeah uh, that's right. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because when I first became a Christian, I think I read a quote, it might have been C.S. Lewis or somebody, said, being a Christian's hard. And I thought, what is so hard? You just accept this grace, God's love, you're in this relationship, how beautiful it is. And then somebody wronged me. And it's like, oh, I have to forgive that person, <laughs> right? So it's those type of not a rule to, for salvation, but just that, you know, if I want to walk and follow Jesus, those are the type of, of habits you yeah. have to develop. Yeah, yeah. But it's, uh, there's a joy, isn't there? And, and a peace. Yeah. About things. Yeah. And not and giving up, trying to be, make our own life. That that's is, that that's right. It's a real liberating yeah. um, um, process. The pressure is off, mm. right? I don't need to, you know that performance anxiety, if you like. It it, it I mean it's still there because I've got the inertia of, of 45 years of, of living with it. But you know if I catch myself, I go no no no, just mm. just let this go. Mm. And and I remember when I was at at Forest City, we ran a um, Alpha program, which is a great. Uh, program, so and it's a discipleship program. Discipleship, yeah. yeah, sort of Christianity 101, if you mm -hmm. like, um, but it's a discipleship program, as you say. And and the first time I was a group leader, I wanted to be the best, right? Mm -hmm. So I read up all the questions and I made up questions mm -hmm. of my own, and this is just going to be great. And of course, it was a flop, 
<laughs> and the first two or three sessions were just terrible. And, mm. and uh, something gone. So I said, Dave, this ain't yours. Mm. Just let it go. And then so, yeah. you know, I had my old way of doing it, right? They said, I've got to do all this. And then when I just let it, let God kind of drive the bus, mm. it was just night and day. Yeah. Right? And that's something that, that, so I think it gets back to your question. It's like, I think that's one reason why we chat, we struggle with, with Christianity is that we're used to doing stuff in our own yeah. power and yeah. it just doesn't work. Yeah, out. especially for men, I think, eh? It, uh, yeah, often you gotta show yourself. That's who we're supposed to be. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Prove yeah. yourself and all that type of thing. Right. And that's just you know that's pride, right? And that's that that's counter to to Christianity. Right. I think it's no way. Watching Arc Media, and today we're interviewing uh, Dave Hancock, who is uh, one of the Arc uh, part-time staff and uh, now um, our most recent uh, board of director to join the board. And so we appreciate his contribution, and he's just reminiscing on uh, his journey in life and uh, how he his uh, contribution uh, here at the Arc is playing out. So Dave, thanks for uh, you know uh, you you've. Uh, lent yourself quite a bit to us in the last couple of years and uh, I rarely get a no from you if I ask you <laughs> <laughs> can you can you help me out here um, so maybe just uh, tell the folks a little bit about what an evening supervisor does what's that about and then uh, you also do the Sunday connection so you can talk a little bit about those kinds of uh, roles that you're helping us with, if you would. Yeah, sure. Well, the, the supervisor role, I guess, is, is, is sort of self-described in the title. You sort of supervise the evening, and when the, when the team comes in that volunteers, and they're just fantastically faithful teams that, mm -hmm. that serve here, they know what they're doing, but we sort of just get organized beforehand, and then, um, you know, we just sort of coordinate the evening and just, just administer the evening and, and the flow of, of, of the guests coming in, and then and calling them up to the table and and uh, and things like that. Um, one of the things that, that I think is fantastic about the Ark is it's, it's it is unabashedly a Christian organization. And so you know we don't just have a prayer at the beginning of the evening. We do a, a, a devotional. You know so that's one of the things I'm privileged to do. All the evening supervisors are privileged to do is a devotional at, at the beginning of, of each. Uh, uh, beginning of the evening and it's and it's really cool because it's if you like because we get a lot of people coming most weeks or days of the week these guys get to go to church mm. every time they come here right right so so that's kind of the uh, you know you know how the evening would start off once we get people sort of up and about and, and they've, they've uh, been able to get the meal then if you know if everything's going smoothly it's great because it creates a little bit of opportunity for me and, and some of the volunteers just to walk around and talk to folks and and that is just uh, you know a true true blessing mm -hmm. you know if they feel comfortable and it took a while for them to feel comfortable with me yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know who is this new guy type of thing mm -hmm. um, but uh, once that, that trust was was established um, you know they, they feel free and comfortable to share and, and let you into their lives a bit and it's just a blessing mm -hmm. to be able to kind of walk around and, and, and talk to these guys to so actually get to know them as people yeah as individuals yeah, their names, uh, 
sometimes it's a street name, but uh, sure. But uh, I had a little bit of their story. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's and it's and it's interesting because we take you know social interaction. You know, not so much these days with COVID, but you know, up until that, we we took you know social inter- interaction for granted. You know, we can have conversations like this. How many conversations do you have each day at work and 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 with your family and friends? Well, you know, for a lot of the folks that are our clients, um, they don't get that. And you know they they all get if they walk down the street, um, you know they they will have no conversation or you know people in the broader community will may you know walk avoid them walk around them insult them type of thing, and and so I think to have a respectful conversation with the evening meal supervisor or the volunteers is a big deal to these guys. Yeah. It means a lot to them. Yeah, I, I uh, saw so there's a I watched a movie on uh, sort of a. Context was a soup kitchen, and uh, in the course of it, uh, one of the clients says to uh, to a volunteer, he says, "You know why this conversation is important? It's not that you're going to provide a solution; it's that you heard me, mm-hmm. right?" So I think sometimes we come in, you know, people are intimidated to volunteer because I don't know what to say. Uh, you don't actually have to say much. They're not really looking for you to solve everything for them. Right. It's just to acknowledge that. They're there. Yeah, just show that you care. Yeah. Right, and that's. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and that, and it's funny. I was saying to to a home group that I was in, you know, quite a while ago. Um, you know, we we're talking about spiritual gifts, and and I said I think God's given me the spiritual gift to interact comfortably with the folks here, hmm. and 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 it's funny because if I'm in a social situation like at a house party, and I don't know a bunch of people. I'm really, really uncomfortable. Mm. I, I mm. Well, just sort of, I'm an accountant, right? An yeah. introvert. Um, but when I, when I'm with these guys, it's, it's like, it's just great. Yeah, and, and that's the feedback we get too. That uh, people love you and and your nights that you're here. Yeah, it, it, there's a flow. Yeah, well, that's yeah, that's that's great. And yeah. you know, and you know, I, I I look at the opportunity that that God's given me, that you've given me. Um, you know, it's it's just a blessing for me. I mean, mm-hmm. I may bless these people this much, but I'm blessed this yeah. much, and and it's just to see God in action here. It's just as I say, it's a blessing. That's, that's the way it works, and we, you know, we, we you know, when we're afraid to step out, we cut ourselves off from that big range of blessing, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit about Sunday Connection. What's what's that? Sunday Connection is is really cool. It's, it's as you know, it's the arts version of, of church, um, but it's it's uh, it's really more of a home group. Or I mentioned Alpha. It's kind of like an Alpha kind of thing where we'll get you know anywhere between ten and twenty people, depending on you know how things are going, time of the month, that type of thing. Yeah. And uh, um, and and basically, I'll I'll come up with a topic. Or you know, and let's let's talk about this. So one of the last topics we talked about before uh, we had a break for COVID was let's talk about prayer and let's talk about the Lord's prayer in, in particular. Mm-hmm. So we went through and uh, you know the, the verses and 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 it's just so. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? And and folks will get into you know it's it's cool because let's say we did Alpha at at, at uh, sort of a middle class area and 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 folks have their filters. Right, and and they know what the right answer is, even if they don't agree with it. But they'll say the right answer, right? Uh, the guys, most of the folks at uh, Sunny Connect, they don't have filters. They, <laughs> right? They uh, and that can be you know, it, from time. That's both ways. It, right? it does. It does. <laughs> but uh, but a lot of the time, but they'll tell you what they think. They'll tell you what you think, and if they don't agree with it, they'll they'll say they don't agree with yeah. it, and and we get into some fantastic discussion. And I think the folks. You know, enjoy it. They, they they can interact with each other, and and it does kind of bring them together as they start to share. Um, because in addition to kind of talking about, you know, um, the topic of the day, they'll get into stuff that that that's personal. Mm. You know, they've got this going on in their life, or that going on in their life, or this happened mm. years ago, and and it's uh, it just creates that sort of intimacy mm-hmm. um, with with the group. So yeah. yeah, that's it's a real blessing. And they pray for each other. Yeah, and lead out in prayer. Yeah, uh, for each other. Don't yeah, they? yeah, that's right. Because yeah. you know, we'll try to leave five or ten minutes at the end to uh, um, uh, to pray, yeah. and you know, what are your prayer requests? Yeah. And, and people will, um, you know, as you say, pray for each other. Um, we had a time. This wasn't Sunday Connect, but uh, we had a, uh, a 
a year or so ago, um, a fellow in, in for dinner, this is just for dinner, his uh, uh, buddy, his OD'd, and he, this guy was just a wreck. Um, so I prayed for him at the table, and then I said, why don't you come up to the front and, the, and the, we'll, we'll pray for you. So, you know, and stopped the meal and, 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 and just prayed um, for, for this guy. And, uh, you know, in front of everybody that was, that was there for the meal. And I had one of the volunteers, the, the team lead, say that was just incredible, the response of the guests. Like, nobody was eating. Mm. And everybody was either looking at, at us at the front or had their head bowed praying. Mm. Because it was something that, you know, they, they live, they, you know, that they can get exposed to, they could relate to. Right. And they really, they, they cared for this mm. guy, for what he was going through. Right. And that's reflective of that sense of community that uh, is among our, the folks here. They, they do really do support each other in surprising ways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, my observation, when I, you know, sort of over the years, is that many folks come thinking people are poor because they don't know God. And if they knew God, they wouldn't be poor. And uh, that's uh, overly simplistic, uh, for sure. Uh, but uh, it's surprising how many people actually hear... Oh, maybe it's surprising. I, I think I was a little surprised how many people actually do have at least a degree of faith. Yeah. And uh, their lives may not look like what we think, uh, you know, at least a middle class Christian would look like, but they, because they've dealt or, and are dealing with a whole other, you know, set of issues. But there's, there's a lot of faith here. There, there is, absolutely. Yeah. Like you say, when we pray um, at the beginning of every meal, I'll, I'll kind of look around and, and there's a lot of heads bowed. Yeah. And maybe that's just out of respect, but yeah. I think a lot of that is, is that they are believers. Yeah. And, and it just marvels, I'm just, I just marvel at it, um, you know, for what they've gone through in their life. Yeah. That, that they, um, that they, their faith is that, is that strong. Yeah. And, and their Bible knowledge is, is actually fairly surprisingly strong as well. Yes, and the worship music that they know. And we should mention once a month uh, in the connection, Larry McGill, who you'll see on our videos, comes in and does a worship uh, and music slash concert piece for us because we don't get a lot of opportunity to actually just spend time in worship. So Larry helps us with that once a month in the, in the connection. And again, uh, you put up the words of a song and they know them. They know they, them. They sing yeah. it. Yeah, it's... It's uh, there, there's a lot more faith there. Oh, absolutely. And uh, and community than than what you might yeah. expect. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's well, it's true. And I mean, you've got the pictures. You know, I don't know if people know this, but in the dining room for quasi regulars, there's, there's sort of a wall of fame, and uh, you know, with everybody's picture, and it says art community. I think or art family. Art family is, is that's their word. And, right. and it truly is. And, and some of the folks that I, you know, first introduced myself to when I started, you know, I'd say, hi, I'm Dave. And they go, I'm so-and-so. And there's my picture on the wall. Right. So they, they belong. Be they belong and, and that's a huge, huge thing for them to say, I belong somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. 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 Now, Dave, you, you worked in business, as you said, for 35 years and now you've been with us for a couple of years. What's, what's the difference in working in those two contexts? All of them are exactly the same. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, except for the bonuses, right? Except for the bonuses, yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, it's, it's, it's uh, well, it's kind of night and day. I mean, I, I think of, I'll say two things. Um, one is, and we kind of touched on it before, um, is, is, you know, for, as a Christian, you just kind of let God be in control and have faith. And, and uh, you know, where something kind of popped up at work, you know, what can I do to fix it? We better get a team together. We better get, you know, some meetings set up so we can come up with a plan and, and, and just get this problem resolved. You know, when, you know, I had the privilege of, of filling in for Wade um, a couple of years ago, a summer ago, um, and I saw you in action. And the faith that you have is like, oh, yeah, something would pop up, and I'd go, okay, so what's that going to do? We better get something organized. And it's like... God will look after this, and then the phone would ring, and a team would, would suddenly say, well, I, I, I can come in tomorrow night, or soup bowls would just suddenly appear, right? <laughs> and so that's a real big difference, is, mm. is that this is a truly faith-driven organization, whereas, and I don't mean this badly, where I used to work is truly a profit-driven organization. Sure, sure, that's the nature. And that's just the nature, I'm not, you know, yeah. that's just the secular sure. world. There's yeah. no doubt about that. And then the other thing for me personally, you talk about you know the changes that I've noticed over 15 years is is that 
and I said this to my wife a little while ago, after probably being an evening meal supervisor for a year, I probably told her more ARC stories after being there for a year than I told her work stories after working for over 35, <laughs> right? I mean, it's not yeah, that I, I wasn't committed and, and stuff, but there was no passion, there was no joy. Mm -hmm. It was just something I had to do. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, this is, and it's people too, right? It's yeah. such a big, a big, big difference. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, on that last, uh, maybe the last, last uh, comment, um, uh, you've talked about the people and, and um, their journey a little bit. And again, you know, people have a lot of conceptions and misconceptions about uh, people who are poor, people who are, you know, camping in those tents and so on. Um, tell them your impression of them now, and maybe how that's changed if it has over the over the years. Yeah, well, I mean, it kind of goes back to my first night here when I was so overwhelmed with with emotion and and just these are people. They're they're really not a lot. Well, there's no difference from anybody else. You know, you talk, you talk to them and you hear their stories and you go, man, if I went through what you went through as a kid, I'd be sitting right beside you, right? The kids that are abused or kicked out of their homes and, and things like that, things that have happened to them beyond their control. And there's a, obviously a subset that have made bad decisions. Right, but nobody planned to end up having dinner tonight here at the Ark. Right, and 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 uh, this was not their life goal. This was not their life goal. They made some <laughs> yeah. bad choices. They were, you know, fed some lies that they ended up believing. You know, whatever. And obviously, mental illness is a big, a big part of, of of this. And and you know, this is too much of a simplistic blanket statement. But I, when I look at the numbers of people that we serve, it's kind of a damning statement on society. Right. Because in my mind, you know, if you like, you know, here's you and me, here's the guys that we feed, and they didn't go like this. They trickled through. And there's all the safety nets that you sort of think a, a modern, just, you know, affluent society should have in place um, to catch people before they get to the art. They're not in place. Mm. And, and it's just so sad because we're dealing with people. And, and that's the thing that just hits me is that we're dealing with somebody's, you know, mother, father, brother, sister, yeah. son, daughter, and and it's like they're they're real people, yeah. and, and and that's and God loves them just as much as uh, anyone oh, else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, ex ex exactly. And that's yeah. I think that's what what draws people like me to the art is is that you know they're real people and you just want to help them. Mm -hmm. You know, either you know right now today or, and then ideally you know bring them to Christ right you know to help them forever right thank you Dave for uh, spending some time with us today and opening your heart and sharing your story and your thoughts and uh, if you've listened to Dave and uh, wonder what this whole volunteer thing is maybe you should give us a call too thanks stories told of a sailor in times gone by who uh, got marooned on an island all by himself. And he was there for quite a long time. Remember the story of Castaway, I guess, something like that. And he managed to build himself a little hut and gather himself a few supplies that he had scavenged up and, you know, survived. And he was there for quite a long time all by himself. And uh, one day he was out uh, scavenging around for food. And uh, he noticed, he uh, looked back at, towards his encampment and he noticed uh, smoke. And he raced back and he saw that for one reason or another, his little hut was on fire. And uh, it burned down and everything that he'd saved and had in there was gone. And of course you can imagine he would sit down and have himself a good cry and uh, I'm sure you know, he called out to God like, why are you picking on me? Why me? Was it not enough to be marooned on this island? Uh, you have to take my hut too. We seem to blame God for most things even though it might have been our careless thing with the fire. But uh, anyway, he uh, next day came around and over the horizon came a ship. And the ship came sailing up to the island and lowered a boat to come ashore and uh, to collect him. And uh, when uh, he got on back on the ship, the captain said, we saw your smoke signal. And you know, there's a lot of times in life uh, for all of us, I think, where something befalls us or happens to us, a trial, a problem, a disappointment, um, some, uh, unfairness, uh, rejection, 
it could be all kinds of different things and it seems so unfair and and we do pretty much what our castaway did <laughs> you know uh, why me is this not have I not had enough and yet oftentimes we haven't yet seen the end of the story and the very thing that uh, looked so bad at the time turns out to be something better than we thought uh, we learn a lesson from it. Uh, some new opportunity comes. Uh, you know, you think of this, uh, you know, the story of Colonel Sanders. He lost a job, started a chicken restaurant, and the rest is history, right? World famous, uh, and and so on. Till the and of course his image is still famous. Uh, the story is told of Abraham Lincoln. If you follow his career, he lost way more elections than he ever won. Uh, but at least some historians feel that if he'd won even one of those other elections, he probably never would have been president. So, you know, it's, uh, you've got to have the long picture. The future of your life has not been written yet. And we don't always know the meaning of things happening. It's not always God, you know, punishing us. And here we are in a time of, of trial. And uh, certainly this lockdown period is more difficult for some people than other people. Uh, some people uh, are, you know, sailing along, pretty, life hasn't changed too much for them. Other people are really, really struggling. And we see that here in the city. Uh, we are aware that uh, the social agencies are seeing increased demand. People that never had to look for food security before, for example, more people are showing up. And so we know that it's a difficult time. And, and yet, you know, we don't know what's the end of all of this. We don't know what will change in our society. Hopefully, there'll be some good things that come out of it. We'll, you know, we'll readapt some things and get our priorities straightened around better to care for one another. And even in our personal lives, uh, there can be changes, especially if you open up. Usually when things go wrong, it's because we grab a hold of that problem and try and fix it ourselves <laughs> instead of uh, letting God uh, work it through. Well, you may say that sound, doesn't sound terribly fair on God's part to be, you know, playing with our lives like that. But, uh, you know, it's springtime and the garden centers are just opening up. And I'm sure many of us will be out in the gardens in the next few days and weeks. And uh, there'll, be, there'll be some pruning to do on the rose bushes, on the trees and so on. And, you know, you prune your garden, you prune your trees, not because you're mad at them or not because you hate them, but... It's good for them. It brings beauty. It brings the best life out. And that's what God does with those circumstances. I don't believe God sends misfortune. I believe God knows what to do when more misfortune happens to us. And he takes that and he uses it uh, for our own good, make us a better person, maybe more, more understanding, more compassionate, to learn a lesson of grace ourselves, learn how to forgive. Many times you'll look back on a circumstance in life and say, I wouldn't want to go through that again, but I'm glad it happened. And so as we go through this period of time, just be open to what God might be doing. He might be just pruning a little bit for you.